This sacred city that houses the Stargate was established around a cutting from the Tree of Enlightenment, the Buddha's fig tree, and from these perceptions an outpouring would commence, an understanding established, an understanding that has now dissipated from all reasonable thought. There is an object in Sri Lanka that literally translates as universe cycle, and because of the nature of the artefact, some think it may have divine and cosmic powers. Wait till you hear this. A map to unlock the secrets of the universe, or perhaps the knowledge to unlock the encounters that took place in our own close vicinity of the universe, the solar system of antiquity nonetheless. Measuring around 1.8 metres in diameter, the Sakwala Chakria is shallowly carved onto a low rock face among the protected park ruins, and its front façade can only be seen from ground level, and four seats have been sculpted into a flat rock surface opposite that provides the ideal viewing area. Both the map and the seats, which are also of mysterious origins, have puzzled historians, archaeologists and academics for more than a century. The so-called Stargate of Sri Lanka is a mysterious place with much that is yet to be unveiled, and there are stories about UFOs and other strange happenings around this location, which is known popularly by its local name, Rajarata, which translates as the Land of the Kings. While very little is known about the chart and its purpose, the iconography is incompatible with other carvings of the Anura Depora period, between the 3rd and 10th centuries. The chart's centre is made up of seven concentric circles divided by parallel, vertical and horizontal lines. Rectangular compartments contain small cross circles. To the untrained eye there are figures resembling umbrellas, and these could be pillars of light emanating from the heavens. When compared to other carvings from the same period, such as the Sandakaha Dapahana, which depicts vine, swans and lotus, all typical of Buddhist iconography, but this chart is without religious context, leaving it without an obvious explanation as to why it was here. Of course, it's unclear exactly what is happening here, but it is also clear that this relates to a global event at the time of this undertaking, because it is astronomical in nature and therefore seen globally. They saw it in the sky, that much is clear and perhaps this is the event that took place on Saturn, the solar shift in the wake of the Squatterman. The first academic to note the chart's archaeological importance was H.C.P. Bell, a British civil servant appointed as the first commissioner of archaeology of Ceylon, Sri Lanka's former name. Bell included a description of the chart in his 1911 report to the governor of Ceylon, where he concluded that this ancient map of the world perhaps the oldest in existence, is of quite extraordinary interest. Its presence testifies to the antiquity of that astronomical lore still pursued in some of the Buddhist monasteries of Ceylon. And while the chart does not resemble a map in the modern sense, Bell wrote that it depicts an old-time cosmographical chart illustrating in naivest simplicity the Buddhistic notions of the universe, and he interpreted the circles, the symbols, and the marine life on the chart, based on his knowledge of Buddhism on the island, to mean the earth, the seas, outer space and the universe. While discussions around the chart for many years were mainly confined within academic circles due to its historically important location, some observers have compared the parallels between the chart in Anura Dipura and similar sites in other countries that are believed by some to be stargates ancient gateways through time in which humans could enter the universe, suggesting that this chart holds the secret code for unlocking the portals. The very presence of this map and the seats has amazed archaeologists and puzzled professional historians for well over a century now, and to this date very little information has been accumulated about this chart and the purpose of its existence. It is important to note that the Stargate of Anura Dipura had near identical shapes and symbols to those found at Abu Ghraib in Egypt and the Doorway of the Devil in Peru, and the most striking similarities at these locations is the obvious close proximity to water. 
The nearby Tessa Weaver Reservoir, built in 300 BC and this has been thrown around as conclusive evidence, since both Abu Ghraib and the Doorway of the Devil were also built near water, which according to the Stargate theory, allowed extraterrestrial beings to process gold from Earth's water. Ancient Sri Lankans had a clear idea of objects in the sky and of outer space. In early Brahmi inscriptions found in Sri Lanka, there are a number of names that refer to specific stars and concepts related to astronomy. One of these inscriptions found in Karinda, which is a religious and historical site on Sri Lanka's southern coast, containing the phrase Aparamita Loka Datua, which means the infinite universe. And what this suggests is that the person who engraved it had a very good understanding of the nature of the universe they lived in. The greatest challenge in identifying the function of the chart has been the lack of evidence to correctly date it. While Ran Masu, Uyana, and other parks and stupas in Aradapura are mentioned in chronicles and inscriptions dating back as far as 250 BC, the Sakwala Chakriya is not described in any historical records at all. There would definitely have been a practical use for this diagram, but it's a huge challenge to figure out what that might have been, especially when we can't correctly date it. And perhaps it's prehistoric, but then, why isn't it mentioned in the construction of the city? The purpose and meaning of this artefact may be lost to history, but what do you guys think about Sri Lanka's ancient Stargate? Comments below, and thank you for watching. <laughs>